Do you realise how many sharks there are swimming in our waters? Today I take my sons fishing near some of Auckland's most popular swimming beaches to teach them all about sharks. Welcome to Black Magic Fishing NZ. Well, we're out with the A team, Raven and Bailey. They're my number one fishing buddies, as you probably well know. And again, they've come to me with a proposition. They said, Dad, um, we love sharks. We want to get close to them. And um, I said, well, I can take you shark fishing, but it's a pretty big, big thing. And they said, yeah. And I said, you know, we can actually catch sharks right in our back doorstep in Auckland Harbour. And they said, no way, we go swimming at Takapuna and places like that. And I said, mate, there's sharks right there. And we've come out to the Rangitoto Channel and we're going to try and catch a bronze whaler shark. Now these sharks, I've caught them up to about 300 kilos, but they average about 100, 150 kilos around here. So boys, do you reckon you can handle them for a starter? Yeah. yeah. I might have to give him a hand with this one. And Bailey, you, ha you had an interesting comment on shark. I went into this restaurant in town and I saw they had shark fin soup. So I searched it up on the internet and what they do to the sharks is they chop all the fins off and then just chuck them back in the water to die. How cool is that, eh? It's a Sunday afternoon. There's about, I don't know, 40, 50 boats in the Rangi Tunnel. Lots of people fishing. And uh, hopefully we can turn the sharks on. They're usually here at this time of year. And uh, Raven had a few things of interest about sharks, didn't you, Raven? Yes, I have. I've always seen sharks on TV and they look real cool there. But I really wanted to see one up close and I think today is my chance. Well, we're set up. We've got the baits in the water. It can be a bit of a waiting game. I usually find that the bronzies bite on the uh, slack water and that's not far away. So hopefully we don't have to wait too long. We've got the burly going, so it's shark fishing. I hope you boys don't fall in the water. <laughs> Let's go. I've got the job being the burly boy. That's wine. The big shark. One hard pump of wine, remember what we've taught you before. Raven, can you clear all these rods for me, my friend? I want them all out of the way. Pump of wine, buddy. I'll take this clicker off, eh? There we go, that's better. Don't let him go around the anchor. Don't pull him back, don't pull him back. You better sit. He's on the anchor, he's on the anchor, I can tell. Can you? Yeah, he is, I can feel it vibrating. Pull it off. No. Oh. Yep. 
combine. Get your hand. That's it's it. got a hard combine, mate. Yep. Oh. Nice size bronzy for you, actually, baby. Good size bronzy, yeah. Yeah, only okay. about 100 kilos. You guys are kidding me. No. I'd say about 50. Oh. Trace. Now when I trace it, I need you to stand back. Yep. All right. Okay. Now don't wind anymore. Oops. Oops. Right. Keep the rod up. No fudges. <laughs> Keep that rod up. Well, this is what you all came out here for, isn't it? Yes, we'll get to see it. Yes, you will. We'll have a look at it beside the boat. Pump of wind, you need you very close now. You've done really well, actually. So I just need to get some trace? Yep, and then I take over. This is like a meter of lift. Pump, lift. Take a big, that's it. Perfect, good work. You'll see them in just a second. We've got about a 10 foot trace off, 10, 15 foot trace. That's sit back, sit back. <laughs> Doing really well, mate. Ooh, Here's the trace, is. right? Take a step backwards. Now I have to come in and grab that trace. Keep the rod up. Right, this. Now, now, don't, no, don't come to the edge yet. Just wait because this is a big shark. Don't let that trace loop around me. And we, I might have to let it go again. Here it comes. Now, don't. Oh, look at that. That thing's massive. There you go, fellas. Your bronze whaler shark. I like it. Take some shots, Ray. Can you bring it up a bit more? Yep. Just watch that wire, because if I have to let go, you're all going to have to hang on. Yeah. Nice. I like it. Look at that, eh? Beauty. All right, watch it. It's wrapped around there. Can't let go. Untangle that tip. Untangle that quickly, otherwise you're going to lose it. Go, 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 go. Okay. Untangle it around the tip. Um, now this is the time when you do have to be really yeah, careful. Great. Keep that wire away. Okay. I'm using good heavy duty gloves and I'm keeping the shark below the water so we don't upset him too much. I'm going to cut him off shortly. The boys are just getting some photos. But if, if we have to let go, I just show the trace in the water and Bailey can hold on to his rod. See if we can get his head up for you. I'm getting one of his fin. Come on. I'm going to get one of his fin. It looks great. I don't want to touch. Let's see his teeth there. Oh, they're big. Sharp Great shots here. So Biggest very thing. exciting. Beautiful bronze colour. See the bronzy colour? That's why they're called bronze whalers. How's that, eh? I got some bronze whalers to be heavy. I haven't got. I, I haven't seen the teeth yet. Right, so we've got them docile beside the boat and I'm going to cut them away now. So we've got all our photos, the boys have had a good look. And we're going to release them unharmed. I'll take some more just to get some good ones. There we go. Well, my little fish hunters did it again, eh? Bronze whaler shark for the yep. little fella. That one was probably about 100 kilos. How much do you weigh? 30, 29. So about three times heavier than you. Well done. You fought him really well. I'm impressed. Should we see if there's another one there for you, Ray? I think yes, this must be your turn. Awesome. Let's go. Well done. Marine reserves are the perfect place to learn to dive. All you need to get started is a mask and snorkel. This is the Ha Hei Marine Reserve on the Coromandel Peninsula, one of the many around our coastline. The fish are very tame, which makes them easy for a novice to approach. Leather jackets like this one are great to follow and very easy to photograph. For advanced divers, there are so many opportunities to get photos of the harder species like snapper. Sam Power drops his head to hide his eyes so the snapper come closer. Laying motionless like this improves your chances. 
Many fish will go about their normal day if you stay still. This guy is a poser. Big blue cod like this are not that common in northern waters. This shows you how effective marine reserves can be. Learning to snorkel in a marine reserve will probably teach you a lot more about the marine life as there's so much more to see. You will be surprised at what lives under the weed, let alone above. Sam has found a big buck red cray, and it's only in three metres of water. This young lady is on her first scuba dive. Looks like she's having fun. Diving like this with an instructor is very safe and could get you started on a career as an instructor in any part of the world. Some fish have individual characteristics. This guy had a big scratch on his nose. I saw him many times during my dive. Others are just happy to follow you wherever you go. If snorkeling is not your thing, scuba sure can open up a new world for you. There's that poser again. Red Moki tend to stay on the bottom and hunt under the weed. I have often found crayfish where I see Red Moki. The kelp forest is not unlike a forest on land. There are things that live above, within and below it. This cray is not that well hidden. A big snapper will make a meal of him if he doesn't get under a rock or into a good crevice somewhere. Sam is having a great time. Let's see what he's found. A moray eel. People are terrified of these things thanks to the movies. These demoiselles don't seem too worried. I think they're a great creature. They're all bark and no bite. What a great way to finish a dive seeing kingies like these on the hunt. Setting up for shark fishing, there's a number of different ways that you can do it. We're in the Rangitoto Channel and we're most likely to catch bronze whaler sharks, which are what you call a ground shark, or they feed on the bottom. So what I do is I set up a black magic heavy duty swivel. This is one suitable for 37 kilo line, but I just use a really nice big heavy duty ball bearing swivel. And to it, I directly clip sinkers. This one's only four ounce because the tide's just slowing down. If it was really rocking, I'd probably use a 10 ounce sinker because I want to lock that bait on the bottom. So that, I use a pre-made Black Magic Shark Trace, which is uh, 5 metres of 200 kg steel. And that'll handle just about anything bar about a 1,000 pound tiger shark. So they've got a Flemish eye, they're already crimped, so all you've got to do is connect them to your line. So it's a very easy way to set up. So you connect that onto your ball bearing swivel. Make sure you clip the clip across. Unravel your trace. And the piece de resistance is the bait. A skipjack head's my favourite bait, but mullet also works very, very well. And what I do is I hook it right up through the skull and the jaw, 
to come out the other side. So if anything's going to have a pull on it, because sometimes snapper and they'd have a go as well. I've even caught kingies on this rig. That's how you set up for shark fishing. Then we just feed the bait out and drop the sinker down. So we'll just feed the bait out. Now fellas, when this happens, it happens really fast and we have to be organised. Now what I want you to do, it's Raven strike next. So Raven, you'll grab the rod if it goes off and Bailey, you'll wind in the other one and clear it away. And I'll pull the anchor up on the boat. So that's our organisation. Is it clear? Cool. So if we get a boat, Raven, you've already got your harness on, ready to go. Bailey, you're... The Clearing the rod. Clearing the rod. Right, and put it out of the way, yeah. and I'll pull the anchor up and get the boat going. So we're organised, okay? Cool. Every time there's a click, their head goes up. We love it. the uh, light tackle attachment on the harness because uh, this, harn this reel doesn't have harness legs and it works really well with these boys. It's helpful at least. Pull the rod up. Run. Try to get both through the clip. Nice. And put the second one. Ugh. Right, you're on. I'm just taking a couple of photos for my brother. Ugh. That's good action mate, you're pumping and winding. Level the line on with your finger though. With your thumb. Level it on so it doesn't fill up on the spool. That's it. What we'll do is, if you see the trace come up, you only wind it to the tip, and then I grab the trace, but be very careful not to get anything tangled up. Wind hard, he's coming towards us. Pressure, keep the pressure on. That's the way. Oh, he's fighting a bit hard, and now that we're getting closer, he's running. I'm just manoeuvring the boat, that fish just did a really big run and I don't want to get too far away because in the Rangitoto channel there's anchors, there's mooring buoys and I don't want to get caught up in those so I want to stay on top of it so that uh, we don't get caught up in anything like that Gives him a bit of a hand too to get some of that line back He's doing a great job Are you going towards him so I get more slack? Take more line, yeah Like directly on the side Is it? Oh, oh yes right. No, like a couple of metres. Two, three, it's like two, the line's like out two, foot. three metres. It's like 10, 15 foot of um, the chain stuff, whatever it is. <laughs> He's going around to like your anchor side. One hard, one hard, don't be hard, don't be straight. Thanks, that's making it easier. Daddy's getting in pretty close. Uh, we're already on the red line. Yeah, yeah we're just worrying what color you're on. It's a matter Ooh. of pulling, pumping and winding, pumping and winding. No. Wait, can you get out of the way? He's coming around your way. So what do you think of this shark action, boys? Like, Looked over the propeller, over the outboard, sorry. I'm getting too excited now. We've been on this one for about 25 minutes now and uh, it's a real tug of war. Raven's working hard. We've got 50 pound rainbow braid on here and a pretty serious drag. He's having trouble standing up straight but I'm trying to coach him because if you lean into your harness rather than bending over, if you stand up straight it's a lot easier. Stand up straight. Straighten your back up. We're getting close to the steel line. Dad can turn. Yep. He's coming around the front. Uh, quick. Uh. He's going. Watch whoa, the back whoa, of the boat. Whoa. Watch it. Watch it go under the downrigger. I can't. Stop. Damn. For 
to sprint around the prop and snap the line. There's a lot of scientific research touted about shark behaviour and I tend to dispute a fair bit of it, like the fact that sharks don't t like the taste of humans. You know, no one's ever asked a shark for a starter, but I think most humans are actually, if they get bitten by a shark, are smart enough to get out of the water. Now we're two miles from Takapuna Beach and there is a lot of sharks in the Rangitoto Channel over summer. If they wanted to go and have a crack at you, I'm sure they would have done it by now, but they're not like that. But they are opportunistic feeders and they are apex predators. So treat them with the utmost respect. You know, to me, seeing sharks in the water is fantastic to be able to bring the boys out and show them what a, what a thrill for them too. So I've had a great day sharing my shark experience with my boys and I think that's what fishing is all about, sharing experiences. So catch us next time on Black Magic Fishing NZ.